Bonsai, I'm the Cobra Kai Kid, and today I am joined by a very special guest. I am joined by YouTuber Christian Harloff. How are you doing today, Christian? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. As I was telling you off here, I'm a big fan of your channel, what you do. You're, uh, you can just you can tell the enthusiasm, my friend. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you so much. And I have been a fan of you for a while, too. So really um, crazy to have you on. It's funny because, you know, I've been watching you before I even had the channel. So uh, when I, you know, if, if I had commented in Collider, you know, you don't know who I am, just this random fan. But then after I made the channel, I was like, you know what? I'll just like throw a comment in your chat under Cobra Kai Kid, like probably like will go unnoticed and then you're like oh my god cobra kai kid and i'm like what it's yeah, just man. it's just it's weird that like you know i'm a fan of you before the channel and then like it's just weird well you but, know what it is though too it's the fact that like people ask and i'm sure people will start asking you if they haven't already right so how do you make how do you make a channel how do you get an audience and what i always tell people is that you got to be you got to care about what you're talking about and you gotta you gotta have fun doing it. And if you do, people will feel that. And the other thing that I've been, especially with this new channel I'm working on, it's talking back to people and commenting back to people and having conversations because you never, like I said, like I was very aware of your stuff because as I was doing my deep dives on like Cobra Kai, um, very similar to like William Zapka, apparently too, um, who's one of the only, one of the few guys I still haven't interviewed. By the way, you rat, you rat. <laughs> you got him you got him no uh but uh i ain't get him yet i ain't get him yet you got but you caught you caught look he knew your channel and he watched your stuff and he that was that was great you got to wear his sunglasses that was awesome that was really cool man that was really that was that was a fun that was a fun video thank you yeah that video blew up too huh you put that up in november yeah it's it's crazy i think uh once it got closer to season four people were just interested in seeing me meet the cast smart man very and smart it, it was it was a fun video. I knew I really wanted to capture that experience. Just um, record everything and like make it like I I didn't want it to be like a like a document. Like I wanted it to feel like a movie, like yeah. a like a full like the journey of like and it just it was so fun. I'm glad you liked it. Oh yeah, I watched it. I watched it and I I got a I got a kick out of it. I, I, it was it was fun to watch you interacting with all the the cast too and them being familiar obviously with the channel and um and then the way that you kind of tagged it up and i think that's another reason going back to what we just talked about with people who are trying to do content like this it's putting a spin on it making it fun because you you do it in every one of your videos it's it's you'll throw in some of that personality the flavor you, even the way that you transitioned into each cast member that you were about to interact with it's like clips from the show and putting it in as a and as an audience but it's a very it's a very it's a very good way to do it and a clear kind of creative way of saying here's what's coming next and then uh yeah i've i really i, I dig your stuff a lot man you've it's it's a it's been a lot of fun to watch your channel grow thank you the the easiest part about doing the channel um there's a lot of hard stuff but the easiest thing is to just like be enthusiastic about it because you know i was already like loving the show before i had the channel so just having the channel it just allowed me to have that same enthusiasm but on camera yeah you know it, it it's just it's the best it's it's so fun and i'm i'm super excited to talk to you today what is up to everybody in the chat thank you all for joining us i'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with christian he has uh a youtube channel by the name of christian harloff yes. and i have it linked down below and he also has a uh, movie trivia schmodown so do you want to talk about like what you do on those channels and yeah. what they're about Sure. the The movie trivia Schmodown was basically created, um, like created in 2014, and it was just just started as like a little trivia segment on the Schmoes No po podcast that we used to do. And then once we got into Collider, we almost turned it in. We turned it into like the WWE meets UFC meets Jeopardy, and it was all of these kind of it was like fun storyline driven stuff that wasn't happening inside of the trivia, but the trivia itself was all legit. And now we are partnered up with Skybound Entertainment, just Walking Dead and Invincible. And we have now branded this, it's the world championship of, of movie trivia. And we go all across the, the the country and and do live events. We have the best of the best kind of competing, Kevin Smith, Chris Jericho, um, Paul Walter Hauser, yeah. Stingray, Stingray, and he says his nickname in the Schmodown is Stingray, by the way, which <laughs> so is cool. which is incredible. So he's he's part of the the Schmodown, but that's the Schmodown. Then, because of my roots were 
talking movies and TV and all that kind of stuff. And, and I was, um, I think going back to what you and I just talked about, as far as when your audience talks, you, sh- you got to listen to them. And one of the things they said is, Hey, we miss you talking about movies and talking about pop culture, but the same thing, you got to love it. You got to love talking about it. So I'm like, there's so much fun stuff that I'm listening to and watching. So why don't I just start my own channel again and I'll do something like that. And so about four months ago, started doing the Christian Harloff channel with reviews and reactions. And, uh, and we had, we had on John and Josh and Hayden from, from Cobra Kai and had an interview with them. CM Punk just had Freddie Prince Jr. On, we got Dominic Monaghan coming on soon. So no, yeah, man. Yeah. I so, love him from lost. Yeah. Oh he's, my com- God. he's coming on. He's coming on soon. I'm pretty excited about that. So we, we have, uh, we have a lot of great guests. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that channel. It's been it's it honestly when you said you were watching Jedi Council and this is not a shot at anybody that I did Jedi Council with because I, I love my my time there but Sith Council I think is my favorite Star Wars show I've ever done and the big thing which is the show I do um on the channel is my favorite show that I've ever done so um yeah I'd love uh, and you should come on that show man we should have you we should have you on to talk uh, Cobra Kai for sure on the opposite side I would love to that'd be cool. so fun I also love Star Wars too, so I love watching those Star Wars discussions. I, you know, like I put that I put your podcast on like to go to sleep, like oh, just nice. like all the episodes. Just love listening to it. Are you gonna talk? You gotta talk to Dominic about Lost, right? Do, are, of do you course, Lost. I, yeah, man, I loved Lost. I, I one of the things I want because him, him and JJ are still pretty good buddies. So one of the things that I'm gonna because I, I had an because I think that you said the first one of the first things you saw was when I interviewed the Cobra Kai guys over at Collider, right? Yeah. So on that show, that show was called One on One with Christian Harloff, and I did. Uh, Dominic Monaghan came on that show back then, and um, and so I don't know how much we talked about Lost, but I'll definitely get into it more this time. Because especially with how much nostalgia stuff Cobra Kai is, you know, is coming out right now, I wonder if they're going to do another Lost series at all where it's been talked about. Not that he would tell me, but I'm, I'm still going to ask. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, that that one's that one's a tough one because I would I'm a huge fan of Lost. I've been watching. Surprisingly, I've been watching since the first grade that show. Yeah. I saw my parents watching and I've watched the show over 10 times. It's like one of my all time favorite shows. If if they did reboot it or or do a sequel, I would be happy because it's lost. But also, you know, they kind of ended it in a way where it's like, how do you really? Go how do you do there? it? That's true. I mean, but you never know, right? You never know how how it could. I mean, I'm telling you because I when like throwing it back to Cobra Kai and Karate Kid when that came out, and I've told the guys this many times that when that was when that was announced, I was like, oh, they're gonna do a Karate Kid show. I'm like, man, I'm like, they're they're really. I don't. I don't know if I if I want to see this. What they're gonna? I mean, look at what happened with the third movie. <laughs> what are they gonna do? And then and then I was like, I eat my words quick. Watch that. And and so it. You never know how what the take is and how who's involved in it. So it it could work. Yeah, you definitely weren't the only one. I wasn't on that um, board of waiting for it to come. I right. watched once it came out. Uh, I think it came out May of 2018, and I watched it in the summer so a couple months later okay uh summer of 2018 so uh that's when i first discovered it but yeah i've i've definitely heard like i mean it must have been at least half of the diehard fans at least were very excited but also cautious about it right yeah absolutely very skeptical i I mean it's and they knew that that's what that's what i admire about the both josh john and Hayden so much is that they knew what they were walking into going into it and they did and sit, stick into the theme that we just had about why your stuff is working and how it's passion it's passion and being sincere and genuine <clears throat> you can't find any more sincere and genuine than those three guys those guys love 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 this universe they're not just doing it for a check they're doing it because they love it this is their star wars this is the thing this is what they want to put into it and you can tell every single season and now the way that this fan base has really even grown more so like i mean john Hurwitz is a guy who's out there he is so active on twitter and he is so active with the fan base and like he's paying attention to everything that's going on he's not just the guy that shoots a show and then just takes off he's paying attention to what's going on with the people that are watching his show and he's and he's and he's never a dick to people he's never he's he's always like getting into conversations with them seeing what they like seeing what they don't like all three of them. So it's it's not a surprise that people gravitate towards the three of those dudes. Yeah. 
about a year ago i actually interviewed the composers of cobra kai okay huge fan of the music and um i just remember something that i'll always remember what one of them said they were in their uh the first pitch meeting with john josh and hayden of yeah. like you know before they got hired to do the show and then i think it was john who um said to said to the composers you have to understand this is our star wars like he was so yeah. it was like everything like all the like oh hey nice to meet you it went from like you have to understand this is star wars to us like yeah it, it has to be it has to have that feel so i just i just found that so funny because you know what star wars like is to people and that's their star wars and they're starting to do that though for for this for other for other people even even if people who came in to watch cobra kai for the first time and now are going back to watch the Karate Kid movies, and they've done something which I never thought they would be able to do. They made Karate Kid three watchable again, right? <laughs> the, the, the third because the third one, like they they take cracks at it. They, I mean, even even in this season, and I'm assuming we're talking spoilers and yeah, this, yeah, yeah, all spoilers. If you guys so, haven't watched, then don't watch yeah. the stream. We're talking spoilers. So, I mean, even the way that they address Terry Silver, he's all coked up and he's done all this stuff. Like the, <laughs> they, and even like when I I had. I always make it a priority. Every I always at, go to John after I watch an episode, uh, when I'm finished watching a particular episode, and I go, "Man, that was like amazing that you called that out." He goes, "We had to, <laughs> we had to, because it's like how do you, how do you ignore what that what that tone is?" And the same like, it's there's they they play pay attention to their universe. They always talk about the Miyagi verse and the stuff that's inside of it and what they, and if anybody is in it they could show up if anybody's in any karate kid movies they could show up they're not telling you that they are they're not telling you that they aren't but they could show up and i love that they've done that almost in that star wars capacity what i find funny is um when they introduced celebrities yeah. and celebrities in the show so for example jackie chan is never coming or or at least the the karate kid reboot those characters are never coming in because we right. heard the name jackie chan mentioned in the show he's a celebrity in this show right um carrie underwood who came in at the end of season four she's a celebrity but then you get like paul walter hauser who's also yes yeah, he's a celebrity but he's playing a character and then did you see the andrew garfield video did yeah, well i asked them about Andrew Garfield when they were on the show recently yeah. because they, what they said to me was they said if anybody sh showed that they were a fan of the show we'll ask them to to be in it like that's what happened with Carrie Underwood right yeah. so so I said well then that means you must have reached out to Andrew Garfield and they're like oh no 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 I'm like they <laughs> definitely reached <laughs> they out did, to him and they, they should did. how could they not you have to you have to reach out to him how great would that be if he shows up in either five or six it would probably be six because I know yeah. they were um they were finishing filming five, but, but you see, it's funny because someone like him, you know, he most likely wouldn't be playing Andrew Garfield. He would be playing an actual character, right? Which but would it, be great. it yeah. would be great, but it's just funny to think that like, if Carrie Underwood's in there, she's Carrie Underwood. If Andrew Garfield's in there, he might be a character. Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe he's Andrew Garfield. Who's a fan of karate tournaments, you know, and like, or, or, or in general, or, or he's, <laughs> it, you never know how they're going to play it. I would assume, cause I remember asking them, I think a couple seasons ago, if every year would have a tournament and they were like, no, absolutely not. So they did it in the first, they did it in the fourth. So I would assume that five's not going to have a tournament and then either six or seven will. Yeah. My prediction um, for the next tournament, because yeah. these kids are um, turning 18 years old. And mm -hmm. as we know, it's the under 18 tournament. Right, right. So my prediction is um, either six or seven, season six or seven, um robbie sam miguel that generation become the senseis to the younger generation kenny anthony maybe some of anthony's friends um leah like all like all those middle scores so it's now it's about um we care about miguel mm -hmm. sam dimitri all those characters as senseis and they're training the next generation so well, they said they said that there's going to be a potential spinoff series, right? So they said they've talked about it. They didn't say they didn't confirm it, but they said that spinoff has been talked about. And if and if Netflix wants spinoff series, that's that's not what you're saying isn't too far out of the realm of possibility. I I think that if they're going to go with a spinoff series or go somewhere else down the line, um, I think they're going to do a young Miyagi. 
if yeah. I was if I was to guess. Um, but I would think that you, you do young Miyagi from his time leaving Okinawa with Sato and all of that coming over here. And then um how much longer can you do the like Daniel and, and Daniel and, and um and uh, Johnny can't be rivals for too much longer. I, I mean they've been through too much. Yeah, I was kind of like I, I was actually like really surprised that episode five, I was like, dang, like the whole season, like the whole season three, them teaming up. And it's like for them to like, oh, you guys, you guys come on Get it together, get it together. Get it together. I, yeah. I hope that for season five, you know, they're most likely, we know Johnny is probably going to go to Mexico to look for Miguel. Daniel's going to be back dealing with chosen silver. So Daniel and Johnny are probably going to not be together for the first half of the season. Right. Hopefully when they come back at the later half of the season, hopefully they're, they're not at each other's throats when you have all these like Terry silver. Right. Mike, okay. Mike Barnes. He's coming in a hundred percent. He's in. He's hundred percent. How could you, how could, I mean, there's no, there's no chance he doesn't like If I was ever going to bet the bank, like if people yeah, like yeah. Hillary Swank, I'm not going to bet the bank. on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm betting the bank on Mike Barnes. I'm not betting the bank on Dutch. But I'm betting the bank on on Mike Barnes, especially the way that it was set up. He's been announced before, as far as the name's been announced for sure. Even the little throwaway thing that they had with Daniel and his wife, when he's like, "Are there any more people that are going to show up?" He's like, "No." He's like, "All right, maybe, maybe." A hundred percent, he's going to show up, and he's going to show up as one of the teachers. The question is, the bigger question is, will he be Tori's dad? That's the big question. I think I don't think so. I think they're going to continue to keep it you know, each character on their own. Like a lot of people were saying like Miguel's dad is someone, but that wouldn't really like make any sense because how would, how would Johnny have met Miguel? Like you're telling, you know, it would have been like one big coincidence. I mean, this whole show is one big coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> like every, every, everything that this is, this is one of those things. A lot of times people say the universes are too small and that's convenient. Cobra Kai has created a, new, a, a way of doing television where you want everything to be related somehow. And the way that they're able to do it with the smaller coincidences, who cares? Like they've 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 infused 80s cheese and drama and heart and wrestling and Star Wars into one big, amazing soup that just doesn't sound like it should work on paper, but just works so magically. Yeah, me personally. I'm going to say I want Mike Barnes as his own guy. I think he'll come in like midway into the season. I don't think he'll come in okay. right away. I think they'll kind of like give it that chose like when chosen first came back yeah. and he's like Daniel son. And then like, it, it was that like PTSD flashback from Daniel yep, or when, yep. or when silver walked into the, um the Miyagi do dojo, like one of those, I think they'll end the episode with Barnes. Kind yeah, of, I, th I think that his reveal will be a big reveal. I think it'll. I think we'll get it early, though. I think we'll get it within the first three episodes, um, because he's going to be one of because Chris is going to be gone for at least a little bit. The other thing people are saying, so I brought up Dutch, is that with Chris going away to jail, does he speak in a small world? Does he does he run into Dutch? Like when he's here, that would be that would be amazing. I just heard that um, that Chad just doesn't want to do acting anymore, so maybe not. Christian, that would be the perfect right thing. It would right? it would be perfect. It's like you had like Dutch purposely in jail because Kreese goes to jail and sees that same his sensei from over 30 years ago. But yeah, um Chad McQueen just said he's he's done. So he's done. It, it's yeah. it's not it's not gonna happen. He 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 said it back back in season two, and I think he said it like less than a year ago. So he kind of like He's kind of he's kept saying it. I don't think it's yeah. anything that's going to change, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of people were wondering also for a long time. It it they were, I mean, the the main question forever was, will they get Elizabeth Shue? Are they going to get Elizabeth Shue? Yeah. Well, they they got Elizabeth Shue, and will they get Chad McQueen? I don't think it's a different circumstance for sure. The Hillary Swank side of it, though, I think she shows up. I just, just the question is when, right? Like. uh I think that that maybe is a reveal at the end of season five or even in six, because the reason why I think it is more possible is because of the Netflix conversation. Cause she had a show with Netflix for a bit. I'm sure that there was a lot of mentioning of it. Fans were tweeting out at her about it. 
Um, I'm sure they had certain conversations about it. When I tried to ask the guys about it, they were obviously pretty coy about it. But um, but I, I feel like they've had some kind of conversations with her. It's just if she should, I again, not betting the banks. So she shows up in five. Yeah, I I had no idea that Chosen was going to be in season Me either. at the end. Yeah. I, I would have never. Yeah. I thought it was Okinawa and then he's done. Yeah. I thought the only time he would come back was maybe in the, the last season. If like Daniel was like doing some sort of reunion and like getting all of his old friends and Chosen flies down for that. But I didn't think like he would come back to the valley to stop Cobra Kai as a, as a reoccurring character. <laughs> I was. Did you think that was? Did you think that was Julie? No, I didn't know. I wasn't sure. Now I didn't think it was Julie. I I wasn't sure yet what he was doing. And then by the time he was looking off, I thought maybe I I thought at that point when he was looking off, they're going to reveal somebody. That's when I thought maybe it could be chosen. But not. But I didn't think chosen was going to show up at all. Until the reason why is because of the way that it was the the way that he was talking to it and they were cheating it like as if he was talking to Miyagi and then playing off screen. Then when they revealed us, like, that makes sense that it was chosen. But the question, obviously, of course, is what's the motivation for chosen to be there? What I don't want to happen. I really hope chosen doesn't turn on him again. I want chosen to stay Zen. I like I like the in wrestling terms, baby face chosen. I think that works. And the seat chosen and daniel against mike barnes and silver because it looks like johnny and i think robbie will probably go with johnny to look for miguel as well and so they'll probably be off on a side adventure which which i also think is a is a good uh way to do the next season that is gonna be so exciting it, it's johnny robbie on like yeah as you said like it's like a side quest it's like yeah. a video game mission find miguel yeah. and then like you know like you're gonna find miguel's father and you know, Carmen said like he's a bad man, yep. and I I imagine Miguel's dad like doing some shady stuff, and he's got like shady friends, kind of like a silver yeah. snake dentist kind of like he's got like he's like sh like some shady guys are going into like maybe a shady neighborhood, and then you know there's gonna be like a karate fight, and I I wanted to see this in season four, we didn't get it in season four. I think it is now being set up it has to happen in season five especially with johnny and robbie going he's a sensei student team up fight mm. we've never seen that before where a sensei and a student or a father and son fought alongside each other yeah. imagine johnny and robbie fighting together that's that's what i loved about the end of season four i love the fact that even though as you and i were just goofing around like come on J daniel and and johnny got to get their their act together and start working together it was becoming the same thing like how long is robbie gonna is gonna be against his dad is that gonna be the for the remainder of the show and i love the arc people said that, that robbie didn't have a lot to do in this season and i disagree i think robbie had so much to do he might not have been who in said that much. Who said i saw that? i saw a lot of comments a lot of people when i had done my spoiler review a lot of people said that robbie wasn't in it enough they didn't utilize robbie enough and i said Ro robbie was what? robbie was crucial to he was the main person crucial and the, everything that happens with kenny and and, and all of that and, and oh the idea God. as he's looking to the side and seeing kenny and seeing this ball of anger and going well that was everything that i was and then watching what he ultimately created trying to help this kid but realizing that there's all this fuel and it's like what am i doing here and that relationship and that breakdown that he finally has with his dad like that was such a great arc to just be like, okay, now, now the question is, I'm going to put that stuff away. I'm going to put this, I'm going to go back to the stuff I did learn in Miyagi. And, and I love that Johnny said that too. I got in the way I, you had a good thing going with LaRusso. I shouldn't have messed with that. And to have that portion of the training come back to understand all that and have Robbie be more chill and to be with his dad to find Miguel and that, that I would love to see them fight side by side. I think that'd be amazing. And, you know, Miguel's probably not going to have his phone on him. So it's not right. like, hey, hey, Miguel, I'm kind of coming with Robbie right. to find you. So I think when um, Miguel, when Johnny finds Miguel and then Miguel sees Robbie there, that's going to that's going to kind of leave some question marks. Yeah. And then also the, the other big thing is Robbie's going to have to get used to the fact that Johnny Johnny loves him, but he also lo loves Miguel. Yes. <laughs> but then it gets worse. <laughs> Johnny is dating Miguel's mom. Right. So Robbie is like 
Robbie doesn't know any of this. So it's like, what is he going to like say when he finds out like, like, are you for real? Like you're dating the mom of like, you're dating his mom and he's like your son. Like, like, am I, do I have to be in this family now? I think he's going to have to get over it pretty quick <laughs> um, because it's, it's look, he, it, it, he knows who his dad is. Right. And he knows, and, and looking at it on the other side of it, he also knows that his dad is trying to clean his act up and so if that's one of the reasons why his his act is 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 getting cleaner is because he's got a a healthy relationship and he's formed this relationship with with miguel then robbie seems like he's in a place now where he's going to go all right you know i'm just gonna i I want a relationship with my dad and that's who my dad's like he's i don't i can't see him getting angry at it because i think they're going to go away from the angry robbie thing because i think we we, i think we've been there done that at this point yeah i think i i do think he'll go with his dad um, to Mexico. And I think he will be like, um, he'll kind of feel like, okay, like, I'm sorry. Like I, like, yeah. you know, I shouldn't have kicked Miguel off the balcony. Like I, I like, I want to help you. I want to help you. And right. I want to, I want to make amends. But I do think that when, when um, Miguel is with Johnny and Robbie's there as well, like seeing that like right up in person, that connection that they share, because also keep in mind, Miguel and Johnny have a, a more of a connection they have more in common they have things that they share more than robbie and johnny so i feel like like robbie will see that and it'll kind of like provoke some like jealousy and then it kind of like it's like johnny's like no robbie i still care about you but then like it's like you think they're gonna get you think they're gonna have another one of those beefs i think i think they'll size each other up when they finally get together but I, i think miguel and robbie will wind up being being boys i think that it'll be one of these things where it's it's I do. Th- I think that you're right. When you started uh, in the beginning of this, I think that the father is going to be the main, the main like antagonist. That's going to be the, yeah. the main thing. And Johnny's got to try to figure that out. And then Robbie's going to help him. And it's. I think that the whole thing though is the side adventure of the two of them getting to really. They still don't really know each other that well. You know, they haven't spent a lot yeah. of time together. So just imagine a road trip with the two oh of them alone, God. right? <laughs> them so, like cranking some like ario speed wagon in the car he's trying to and then robbie wants to play something more modern and it's like they, like them learning each other on a road trip to to find miguel is is hilarious and i think that i i wouldn't be surprised if you saw that and like i don't think they're going to find him right away and i think yeah. you probably if, if you're going to guess you'll probably see miguel trying to find his dad there'll be the the side adventure of, of him there'll be side adventure of robbie and 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 johnny and then there's everything going on with chosen and daniel and we still got to find out what the hell's going on with tori and uh and, and silver now like is she going to confront him about the referee you know, taking the bribe like this is like so what's what's Tori Angle going to be? Is she going to accept it? Is she going to accept the championship, or is she going to? Because she started to go down a path where she was. I mean, she even went over to to Sam and was like, "Are you okay?" To check it out, like she's her change of heart um, started to happen. So is that going to stay consistent, or is she going to start going down that path again? Yeah. So Tori, in season two, when they like first introduced her, I was like, "Oh, like this is like a cool new character. I'm looking forward to seeing her." And I I enjoyed her character, and yeah. then. Got to that finale. I'm like, okay, she's officially a psychopath. Season three, more of a psychopath. Yeah, and, yeah. and in the second episode, um, they they showed that one scene of her um her dying mom and like you know like her struggling to pay rent and like mm-hmm. you know I started to f- I started to feel sympathy for her. I didn't think that I would, but then after that, you never saw that again. And then she broke into the Larusso house. I'm like, yeah, like this character is crazy. I just don't like. I just don't really. Like good character, just not. I don't like her personally. Well, that's well, that's where the wrestling comes in. This is why I always bring the. This is why it's it's very similar to sports entertainment. What the writing has done, whether it's intentional or not, um, because in wrestling you can do the most heinous thing in the world, like the most disgusting, horrible thing that gets the audience booing you, but within a couple of months you can help out another another baby face and then the fans love you again and that's what they're able to do in this show because like you said there are things that this character does that no one should forgive them over like the things that she does but even and daniel russo's wife is mrs russo is is us she she's the audience she, yeah. she everything that you just explained and that you the way that you were feeling is how she's feeling. She go, she walks into that restaurant with every intent to just go after her and call her a psychopath, call her a maniac, and then she relates to it because she was in a position like that. And then from that moment on, 
she has sympathy and she wants to help her and us oh, as an no. audience we're like all right maybe she's not that bad because everybody from what i saw majority wise and i think this is a testament to mary mouser's performance and everybody was was pretty much booing sam for the majority of this show like you're not yeah. really on sam's side sam is doing some stuff where you're just like yeah she's kind of teetering on the dark side and eventually she does the right thing at the end and kind of having balance but like she is she's she's pretty despicable for the majority of this show tori's the one making an effort and sam's the one going nope i'm gonna be a, a prick yeah i thought tori like going into season four i was looking at characters like terry silver robbie um daniel johnny yeah but but tori stole the show for me yeah, she because did. this is a character that i going into this season i just didn't like have any sympathy for and then the whole thing with amanda you know amanda trying to help her out and tori saying i don't want your help i'm like no like 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 she like help like she'll help you and then and then with sam i never wanted the two of them like i never like like was like oh i wish that they would become friends but in season four i was just like oh, i really want them to get along and the whole arc for tori because it's just a character I just didn't think I would ever relate to and understand, but yeah. they did a great job. And I am so excited to see her in season five, like that at the end of the tournament with her, um, you know, after she kicks um, Sam um, and then like, are you, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. And Sam's was, like, what? Yeah. She is so thrown off because Sam just does not want to even give her, an no. inch at all like does not want to let her in the door who could totally. blame her though who could blame her 100 percent. but she tried to it, kill her I mean, and like the things that she did it's, and she hit her with like breast the, the spike knuckles at one point too like she's she terrified her so like, like, like what's worse what's worse cheating on cheating on cheating with your boyfriend or trying to kill you various times yeah. <laughs> not, not, not just once okay like, but i think trying to kill the other person kind that's what i'm of saying like, i'm saying killing someone trying oh, to kill someone oh, she, she said oh. tried to kill her various times and like, she and she cheated on and she yeah yeah so, so 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 much happening but like but i think that you understand that she's just getting into a place where where they've done a very good job writing that character where you say okay not not condoning what you did but man like we you, you, it's this it's, it's ain't easy like and then and then the and then the relationship with her aunt who's just not a good person also and trying to like capitalize on her mom and, and you know being sick and and all of that it's just you you do you feel for her the most i think she had a lot to do and 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 hawk hawk, hawk was not one of my favorite characters at all really? was, no i just i never i there was something about him i just not not by the performance the performance was great um it was just something about the character where i just he he just went so hard in the paint with the like the, the way he turned on his friend and the way that he turned on all his friends and the way he just went really into the side of that insecurity and got away from being Eli, you know. And then when he came back to it, the way that he came back to it after he lost the hawk and the way that he played it this this round, it's like you sympathize with him. And like I I went I I, I was rooting for him in the tournament. And I was like, all right it was it was good to see him like his arc i thought was done very well because of his confidence and even the fact where he, the, the one scene when he's trying to just explain himself to daniel larusso and 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 larusso's like well, well what do you expect you're a dick to all these people what do you what do you expect them to do and he's just feels terrible and daniel's like hey, hey come back and and he's just beaten down like emotionally so finally when he comes back um it was it when dimitri gets him back back in they have that conversation and i love the way they played that from how they began as friends in season one and how they arced back and, and were able to do that again. And it was Dimitri that was able to bring Eli back to the, to the light side, if you will, all the way full and to get him back in Miyagi do. I thought it was, it was great. Everybody was developed very well in this season. It's one of the best written seasons I think thus far. I completely agree. And what, like what's so like crazy about that? Like you, you, like you said, it's, it's the best written season but they had so many characters. They had so many stories and they still did it. They still knocked it out of the park. Um, we we haven't even talked about the middle school arc. I yeah. love that arc with Kenny, Kenny and Anthony. Like, because I was always the biggest fan of Anthony Lurie. So uh from season one, I thought no, like, you, you 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 geeked out when during the deleted scene when he when they showed him up when they showed him in the scene. I saw your reaction, it was great. Dude, I I was always like like season one, he was 
so funny. And he was in eight episodes, actually. Yeah. Which is which which is weird because like I looked at IMDb and I'm like, really? He was in eight episodes, but like even if it was one scene, he was he was in the season and yeah. he was a funny character. And he had potential to go from that like not caring about um karate video games only to to the karate he had potential to join a dojo season two i was like so upset he was only in two scenes the first episode and the last episode season three was i was probably like, depressing for you it was yeah. de- it was depressing <laughs> I, it, it was like and like the, it was like this is the like the scene that he was in uh he was with amanda and amanda's yeah. like anthony go away in the car and that's pretty much what describes his role like it's just anthony Go He's waiting in the car the whole season, yeah, but 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 not this season. They used them. They used them a lot in this season. Well, that's how. So so, so that's actually how I found out about another character that they've been using more. But I, before I do that, I'll give you a little. Uh, I don't know how much of this you know, but um. So Mark Ellis and I, who who started Schmoes, know we met at the well, met at a barbecue, but we became closer friends at the comedy store, which is where we both um really well, that was our gym for stand up comedy. But the way that I got into the into the comedy store, like you have to become a regular, but um, the the regulars will will recommend you. And at the time, the great late great Mitzi Shore was the person who was passing people, and the comedian that that recommended me was a friend of mine. Was Louis Larusso? Was oh, uh, was was Brett Ernst? Oh. Um, and so Brett Brett Ernst, uh, um, every, like he when he showed up in in season one, I was I was obviously thrilled, and then he's not really in two, and then he shows up more so in three, and he has a great scene in four. But I I spoke to Brett last week, and you know he he was it was just telling him that I want to see him in in more stuff, and I loved his scene with Johnny. He's like I don't really think about this anymore. <laughs> like that, that that whole thing was was great. So I want to see Louis Larusso do some more stuff because Brett's um Brett Brett's a really talented dude. Yeah, him and Anoush, Dan and Dude, they're so great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, but that's uh, that's something I definitely want to see happen. But Anthony, Anthony's arc was really good. I thought that they, what I liked about it was that here's this kid that this is how this whole journey began when came and wrote this thing was about this kid that was being bullied, and the irony and the fact that the 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 kid who was being bullied, his son turns out to be the bully. Right. And what did, what did him and Amanda do wrong in order to, that that happened and how does and, and the fact that he even uses some of the Johnny Dark Side where he screams at him. Quiet! Is <laughs> my favorite. Um, and do they have shirts that's that have the, the Johnny screaming quiet? They got to get that shirt. I think they I think they, they, they do somewhere. I have to have that shirt. Um, so. So, yeah, there was like like we mentioned, everybody had had a good angle. And I think that that Kenny. um was fantastic because he had to play such different roles from the, when the season started to when it ends he's got to you got to believe him as this dork dancing on the on the corner like just you're like oh man i feel for that kid you know he's just having he's just trying to have a good time listening to his music and everyone's breaking his chops then your heart breaks when he just wants to talk to the girl and they set him up to go cosplay and he's just he's just mm-hmm. trying to be a kid and then to watch that switch where he takes Anthony at the end and he he's terrifying in that scene. Yeah. He's that that's that is pure rage in that kid who has had enough. And ultimately the the whole catalyst of why Robbie's like, yeah, I'm uh, I I that I can't I can't do that again. I just turned this kid into a into a monster. And that that scene where um I thought it was just really crazy to have robbie face off kenny in the quarterfinals because of just the whole thing like crease are you fighting your friend or your opponent right right and then like robbie like the music gets all dark robbie has like these like death eyes and he just yeah. starts like he just starts like and like that that final kick he kicks him in the face and then like this loud war scream everyone's like oh and like kenny's nose is bleeding it's yeah. like but yeah, Kenny was um, one of the biggest highlights of the season for he me. Was he was so great. And I know um, John, Josh, and Hayden said in interviews that they wanted um, to go back to the story of like, because that's, as you said, that's what the Karate Kid was all about. Yep. Now that all the kids know karate, Miguel, Sam, Dimitri, they wanted to export a new generation. And I thought it was genius to have Anthony be a part of that because I didn't know um, when we found out that Anthony was going to have a bigger role, I didn't know that his stuff and Kenny, the Kenny stuff was going to be intertwined, but I love that. And 
it just all worked so well. Um, Anthony is definitely being set up to train for Miyagi Do in season yep. five. He opened the scroll, the uh. scroll that Chosen gave him. It yeah. was it wasn't Sam, it wasn't Daniel, it wasn't Anthony, yeah. it wasn't Dimitri or Hawk. It was Anthony. That has to be like a sign, you know. He's Christian. He's the chosen one. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know you want him to be. <laughs> I want him. I want him so bad to be the chosen I don't know. one I don't to know. save the valley from Terry. I, I, I wonder. I wonder how how they're gonna play. How they're gonna play him. And the question is, this is why you look at a lot of the behind the scenes. This is another reason why all the guys that created the show are are so good at all the behind the scenes footage that they that they send out. Whether it's uh, Thomas E. It's Griffin. Thomas E. And Griffin. Thro- Griffin. Excuse me. Throwing the uh, throwing the kick. Uh, during the audition or if it's training watching them train and watching the, the the actors training for their fights but i i said it on my review you could really tell how hard mary mouser has been working on her martial arts because she she significantly improved i, I mean they still use some they have to certain stunt you can tell sometimes that there's different people who are not necessarily doing it but if you look at the way she throws her kicks and everything now like Peyton is is has been out of control since the second she started I was like I would yeah. like the way she's throwing kicks and, and she's like I wonder if she trained in martial arts I'm nope. not sure no nope. she didn't never she, she's never fantastic fantastic like, from, from, yeah. since day one when she came on the scene Mary looks like she's been working on it because it looked I, to me felt like a, a far a far improvement of the character of Sam's martial arts from this season from pre- previous ones yeah, and especially out of all the characters, I think she had the most riding on her in terms mm-hmm. of fighting skill because, you know, look at look at um who she's look at her dad, right. Daniel LaRusso. This is the karate kid. It's the guy. The two time champ. This is the daughter of the karate kid, you know. Yep. I, I do have to say, I wish she had the headband. Why didn't he give her the headband? That would have been such a nice touch. Because she lost. No, she before, lost. Before, but, I know, but I'm saying though, otherwise she that because they wrote it like I it she not they're not gonna have her in that losing. Oh, I she'll put, I, it, she'll put it on when she wins. Yeah, but like I, I just I think it just would have like really reminded us that this is the daughter of the karate kid. Sure, but remember, remember that also was the goal wasn't just to be the daughter of the karate kid, it was to do the balance. And that's yes. why Johnny. That's why Johnny came in because of like. And I love that moment. I really. Love I know what you're gonna say when he tells when he when Daniel tells the announcer and he says no no no, two time yeah. champion John, uh, Johnny Lawrence. Like that was like that's why the rivalry needs to die because these guys are on the same page now. They understand. They've been through it. They're fighting a different war now. That rivalry's dead. Plus the fact the best, really. I watched. I just went back and watched it the other day. The all of the scenes with Allie and the way that they they made that work in season three with everything that this is this is what was so great about the show was is perception, right? It's perception of how Johnny saw everything, how perception of Daniel saw it, perception of how Allie saw it, perception of how we saw it. And they play with perception so well in this show. But that scene and leading into it, I wonder I, I assume I don't really need her to come back anymore. I'd love to see her back because she's such a great actress, but I wonder if Allie returns at all. I think she will. Think I think so? she, I think before the series is said and done. Yeah. She comes back just uh one last like fun scene or something. One last fun I so my prediction for how the series is going to end. Here we go. Yeah. This is the this is how I think the whole series is going to end. This is how I think you tie everything together, bring every character together. Kind of like spoiler spoilers for Lost. Uh I love I just I love Lost, but you know how like they had um, the end of Lost, the the church, everyone mm-hmm. coming together at the church, mm-hmm. something like that. So what it's I like a not, party, a big party at the country club. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. they all they all die, and it's the afterlife. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but I think that they're gonna come together at Johnny and yeah. Carmen's wedding. That could be that could be fun. That could be fun. I, I, I think you would see that happening for sure because because you don't need her to come back. She's not gonna be anyone's love interest because both of her, both the people that she could have moved on. And she's, I did like how they teased that her and Johnny were gonna kind of get back together. But then, um, yeah, I she, if she comes back, I don't know. The question is, is Robin Lively gonna come back? That's a question. That no, one, you, that that hasn't brought up as much. It it, it isn't because. 
I think out of all the characters, you know, she never had a romantic relationship with Daniel. And also, how would she? Do you know why that to- was, by the way? Because he was such a cheater or no. such a player. <laughs> he was such a player that Daniel was a player. Daniel wasn't a player. <laughs> but no, no. The reason why, and I'm I'm about 99% sure of this, and I feel like the guys told me this. I don't remember in an interview. Um, she was like 17 years old or something when she shot that movie. And what and uh Ralph was in like late 20s. So like it it just i don't think it was legal to do something along those lines or the way it was to where the way that they the way that they were playing it so they played out this kind of platonic friendship they don't have they don't have a romantic but it's relationship acting. at all it doesn't matter though she's 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 17 years old doing a having a having a romantic kiss or something with a with almost 28 year old guy or 16 whatever she was she might have been younger than 17 i don't remember how old she was but i'm pretty sure i'm pr- i'm pretty sure that that was the reason why do the, the, somebody google it and do the research on it but i'm 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 pretty confident that was the reason why they, they had that relationship yeah i i yeah, it's just, it's just funny though because like when you watch that movie though, she's like, yeah, I have a boyfriend, but like you still see her like eyeing Daniel, like flirting with him, and like it's like like oh like hey Daniel, but then like also like yeah, no, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, it was that's that's why I remember I'm 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 pretty sure, but either way now, not now. I mean if she if not, well Daniel's got a, a wife this <laughs> anyway, but she. I don't know what her purpose would be inside of the show, but again, she could just show up and and help out. That's what I love about the writing is that they find a way to write people in one way or another. You know, it would have to be like I I don't know. It would have to be either like a coincidence, like a run in, or like just um, Daniel. Like oh, like maybe I need some like pottery or like no no no. She probably wouldn't be doing that. Or maybe like Daniel needs something. And she, and she happens to be doing like an, maybe another job or like, and they, they've kept it. I don't, I don't really know out of all the characters, it would be a little tough to bring her. Yeah. In. yeah I think, I think you can definitely get Hillary Swank's character. In yeah. That, and that, that, that could make sense, especially because this is what I love about it. In when, when was the last time you watched Karate Kid three for you? Probably last night. <laughs> I watched the, well, I, wa- I did a rewatch of all the Karate Kid movies and all the, Cobra Kai episodes before season four, so okay, less than a month ago. Less than a month ago. So that scene when when Miyagi, well, right, right when when Terry Silver is is tricks Daniel and and Crease pops out of the back and Mike Barnes comes <sighs> in, yeah, yeah, and they and they go and they they're trying they're they're scaring him. He goes, "Go get him! You want to see some more? I want to see a lot more." And then he <laughs> he grabs Barnes, throws him in, and Miyagi comes in and has this fight. But after the paint spills on Silver, he tells Miyagi, he "Goes, I'm going to open up." cobra guy dojos all over the valley and they brought that back and it's like oh that's my God. that's what he's wanted to do like that was that was his intent and now he's going to do it um and i think when you start season five wherever how many how much time has passed i think there's cobra kai dojos all over all over the valley at this point he spent all his money and it's not i don't i don't think we see the building i think that when we the building of i think that we see it's 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 in full effect by the time it starts yeah, like maybe like a montage of like different dojos around the valley, like, and it's yeah. that that's it's gonna be interesting though because my question is what where is the focus gonna be because we have Terry Silver, we have Tori, possibly Mike Barnes coming back, but then we have like students like Kenny Kyler. Yeah, what like if there's dojos all over the valley. What dojo are we going to be focusing on? Is Kenny and Kyler still going to be in that original dojo? Is Terry Mike going to be in right. that one, or are they going to be dispersed? Like, where is the focus? And where's Stingray, by the way, too? At this point, Stingray, Stingray <laughs> he, gets be to be, he has to be Cobra Kai. Yeah, of course. The question is, at which dojo you would assume <laughs> after what he did for Silver, Silver better take care of him. You know, no, he's not. Does, you don't think so? He's like, he's gonna, he's, I think he takes oh, care no, of him. no, he's not. He's not. He, you, he, you don't he totally think so? used him. I don't know. I, I, I. <laughs> Well, he could rat him out. He could rat him out. I, th- I think, I True. think, I think, I think Stingray's living large. I think in the next season, Stingray is living large, and he has sold his soul, but he sold it to he sold it to Silver, and Silver is he's still bully him and stuff, and and treat him, but he's but he's. I bet you Stingray is riding around in a nice <laughs> car. I bet you Stingray now Stingray is going to be. He's not living at his sister's house anymore. I bet you Stingray is is living large. So. 
wait can't you get in trouble for like telling like the cops one thing like and then like just saying oh like i lied like isn't that like like against yeah, the law a hundred percent but you could all but but if you're if you're conscious if your conscious catches up to you and you and then you tell and then you wind up telling the truth so that silver's going to want to have him keep his keep his mouth shut you know or, or he sends him or he opens up a dojo halfway across the world you know, and then sends stingray there but that's not gonna happen we're gonna stingray I, stingray is gonna stingray is gonna be uh living large i want to see him back like i i don't i don't know if we will but i i want to so bad stingray i th i think i mean paul from talking to paul paul loves doing the show paul loves cobra kai yeah he loves he loves it he loves being a part of it and i know that the, i know that they they love him so um if he wants to be in it, I mean, I think you got to have him back in it. It's kind of an open storyline as far as like, where, where did he go? Unless you do one of those throwaway lines similar because we knew, we knew why he was gone last time because he was sell he was serving, he was serving some jail time for, uh, or whatever he was for, for being, for fighting in a kid's <laughs> high school. So that made, that made sense. Where is he now? You know, like that's, uh, that's going to be interesting. My favorite scene in season four was, you want to be Cobra Kai? You want to be Cobra Kai? You want to? I, I know it's messed up, but like, just like the 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 way they brought back Stingray because mm -hmm. the opening, you know, when I saw Stingray for the first time, I'm like, Stingray, he's back. Yeah. But you have to admit, when you saw that the the first two minutes of the show was all about him, it was a little like why are they putting so much attention on stingray and then you know they had him come into the dojo i'm like there's a lot of attention on stingray right now yep. is this gonna all just be like for laughs and which i i was like fine with it because i was just enjoying the watch for the first time but like it was just like a little thing in the back of my head like what's what's going on here and the way they used like i i love like stingray's like 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 sir like I, I want to be Cobra Kai. It's my right. dream. It's all I ever want because you know, there's something like kind of wrong with him. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, he's, he's an adult who just like, all he cares about is Cobra Kai. That's it's like, he'll do anything for it. And he just wants acceptance. You know, he just wants, he, 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 that's the thing is that that's what a lot of, I mean, a lot of these characters inside of this, even Daniel from when Daniel started, they just wanted to be accepted, you know, and, and, and that's, and that's, stingray to a t he just doesn't have a place to belong and he felt like he did and he even says it a couple of times like that was those are my friends and he's not accepted when he comes back and nobody's really making a big push for him to come back he has the party and and he beats the crap out of his neighbor you know and and then he feels like all right yeah i am still cobra kai and it's heartbreaking that scene you feel bad you feel bad for him when he comes in and they played it really well it's like okay he's coming in terry silver because when you see that scene you don't think what's about to happen is a you don't think that that's going to happen yeah. you think you think that he goes in there and that basically what the intent of at least this is what i thought the you think the intent of that scene is just to show that the sadistic terry silver from karate kid 3 is back yeah. that's what that shows you and it's like oh what's going to happen next and what's stingray is going to be he might be done for the season but then the way that they play it like oh no no that's how he's he's not only sadistic he's scary and he's smart and he's been setting this up for the whole thing and he had this plan immediately and thought of it that quick that's why he's as rich as he is and when you're binging the episodes you have the end of episode nine the very end miguel breaks his back sensei he's like oh what the hell is gonna happen to miguel the beginning of episode 10 you see a like a monitor like a hospital monitor you're right. like okay miguel's hurt like this is bad but then it cuts to stingray and you're like yeah. wait what we're not done with stingray and then just the whole reveal and that final scene with silver and crease that is one of my oh, favorite great. scenes you have the iconic terry silver theme and thomas is acting like just the whole thing and like i love like crease you know like you think i'm your weakness you have it wrong i am your strength i've been your strength since vietnam and then terry's like oh there it is always could count on you to bring that back yeah. like yeah just it's and then he has he's like the joker like doing the dancing while while crease is getting arrested yeah and in fact i mean the way, the way that they play that in a lot of people were like well how could crease who's been this maniac for so many years that just go go good like that after just seeing johnny and when you go back and you watch season three um and you watch the finale of season three and you see that how much there there was a lot of goodness in john crease before he had to make that 
sacrifice and throw his superior in that pit, uh, that you know pit of snakes and all that and that finally it took that long for him to kind of turn around and and come out of the dark side right and that's why that star wars comparison is always thrown around and 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 hearing the fact that they mention star wars in the writing room all the time is fantastic <laughs> um but you can see that it's like how long was he in the dark side was there ever good in him and he clearly was but he is ultimately responsible for bringing in Palpatine yeah. who is, because because silver silver is Palpatine. He opened Pandora's box. Yep, it was he sure did such a such a great moment. Um, I thought Kreese's redemption it was just like it was insane to see just the full circle. Him looking at Johnny, Johnny giving it like don't do it, don't do it, and then right. and Kreese saying like let her do what she wants. Like to yeah. Tori, just it was beautiful. But then you know. Kree says, you know, he sh he had a moment of sympathy and and Silver gets rid of his weakness. It's like Well, it's all that it's it is even that scene where Terry Silver brings in Johnny to beat the crap out of him to show <sighs> to show his 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 boss. Hey, look, look what I did for you, boss. And the boss is like, What'd you do? This is this is what like no, like that my love's towards him, not you. And and Terry Silver feels that in that moment. And then that's when that's when it all goes south for Crease. Because right then and there, he's like, "This is the gift I gave you, and you're not you're not taking it. Like, what's happening here? Like, I'm I'm putting my energy and I'm back in the wrong horse here. And I think that was the plan right there when it started to switch. And Terry Silver's like, "Okay, this guy, he's he, the he's mercies for the weak. You're 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 out, and I'm gonna take you out. And it was like I said, the Sith. It's like there's always the Sith. There's always the one who has the power, and there's always the one who craves the power. And uh, and Silver craved the power, and and Kreese is now paying for it." Yeah, Crease. It, it's funny because a lot of people will um, bring this up, and I, I do, I do understand this. You know, he tried to kill Johnny in season three, the right. end of yeah. season three. So yeah. it's like, what would make him want to now redeem himself? But here's what I think it is, and you can tell me what you think too. I think, um, you know, it's it's one thing when you're kind of like doing it yourself. You know, he didn't want it. He even says while he's choking Johnny, like, I didn't want it to come to this. Right, you know, he, right. he didn't want yeah. it. He kept asking Johnny to join him. And Johnny kept saying, like, no, 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 no. Kreese kept giving him the chance. But when when you see someone else, it's kind of like it's like if you have like a younger sister that you mm -hmm. just keep picking on. It's OK if you pick on your younger sister. Somebody else does it. Right. Somebody else does it. You're not going to like that. Only I get to pick on my younger sister. So it's like seeing Terry, you know be the one to um go after johnny that's what made crease um human again which yeah. i i i was obsessed with um jo uh crease is one of my favorite characters in the show so yeah there's a lot there's a lot of depth to him and what they've done with him over the last couple of seasons for sure and um i mean martin cove the great martin cove so um it's uh yeah, it's it's it is. I'm <clears throat> sorry. It was a great season. I loved what they did with it. Loved the love the writing, and I, I can't wait to see what they're gonna do going into uh, into five. Same here. Do you want to take um a couple questions from the chat before we sure. wrap up? Sure. Okay. Cool. So if you guys want to ask some questions, we'll answer. So, uh, can you see the chat? Yeah, I saw it. Didn't I think I saw it? super chat or something come in oh yeah let me here let me see if there's any um of those we'll answer them first uh sorry guys <laughs> give me one second um uh brian larkin thank you for the super chat uh this question is for you who would you still love to interview from the cobra kai cast oh man um let's see I haven't interviewed. Who, who haven't I interviewed? Well, Tom Thomas, obviously uh, Terry Silver, brand new. I haven't interviewed him. Uh, definitely William Zapka. Um, Robbie, haven't interviewed Robbie. Uh, Hawk. So, I th Dimitri. Those are the ones I and oh, and uh, Tori. I haven't interviewed Tori. So those are Peyton. I haven't. Uh, the, those are the ones I don't think I've interviewed yet. That would be good. I hope you get them. That would be a fun interview to watch. Great. Uh Thanura Ravindra, thank you so much for the super chat. And Chris Klotz, oh, I like this question. Uh you're 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 familiar with like a lot of movies and actors. So um I think you'll have a good answer for this. What actor do you think would be the perfect 
bad guy, so bad guy, bad guy slash father to Miguel. Oh man. <sighs> um, you know, I'd love to see play a bad guy again. He hasn't done it in a while. Is Antonio Banderas? Love to see. Antonio. I don't know who that is. Antonio Banderas. You don't know who Antonio Banderas? Come on, man. Des- no. I'm not Desperado. <laughs> You know, uh, oh come on puss in boots puss um oh oh yes 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 i know that <laughs> google google antonio banderas how dare you youngster how dare I you i am okay wait okay wait yeah antonio banderas oh my gosh wow you did the the you gotta watch you gotta watch you gotta watch that's you have to watch desperado my friend you gotta watch that movie and I, assassins he was in assassins with uh that's when he played a kind of a kind of a bad guy with sylvester stallone he'd be great you you see him as Miguel's dad? You think he'd be good Miguel's dad? Um, I think so. I think he'd be he'd, he's I mean he's a phenomenal actor. Really, really good. I think we actually might have it's not confirmed, but we might have Oh, Spy Kids. Wait, is oh, that Spy Kids, right? Is he from yeah, Spy Kids? Is he? I think so. But Wait. that's true. And Tony Banderas is a little older though, too. That's that's true. Yeah. He's um, a little older. I I, mean, I you know. There were actually some pictures that came out. I don't know if yeah. you saw them from from like the filming in no. um, Puerto Rico. So like who was it? It, it was um, John Leguizamo. It, uh, I, I I don't know. I think I think we might have saw his dad though. Like it wasn't confirmed, okay. but you know it was it was like fans. You know from because they filmed in Puerto Rico. That's where they filmed okay. the Mexico okay. stuff. And you like you saw like fans take pictures with mm. Miguel and Johnny Zapka and Sholo. Um, and one of the photos was of a girl and like an older man who looked like he could be Miguel's dad. So, okay. Interesting. Maybe. I don't know who, I don't know who he is. He might be like a, like a, like, I don't know if he's like a famous actor. Okay. You gotta send me the, you gotta send me the picture and I'll see if there's anybody who can pick it out. I don't even know where it is, honestly, but I'm sure, I'm sure if you like search up like a Cobra Kai season five on like hashtags on Twitter, like someone like, are you looking now? Oh, look, yeah. Yeah, try and try and find it. Yeah, find it. The it was like fans, like you know, they they saw them filming, took a bunch of photos. So yeah. So while you find that, I'll pull up see, another yeah. question. Um, is Miguel gonna find out he's got a sister? That's a good point because, like, you know, you never know. Like, he might have like a stepbrother or a stepsister. Right. You know, That's or. True. You know, you never know what his dad is doing. Like, so that that would, that would be interesting. And there's there's um, what do you think of the possibility of like maybe Miguel goes to Mexico and wants to stay there? Maybe he finds that like you know he's better off there. Maybe he like maybe things go really well. He bonds with his father. He finds out he has step siblings. What do you think about that? And then yeah, I mean that could that could be something also as far as maybe you know he whether or not well remember though the only thing is that yeah I mean it's possible it's just what his, his mom says that he doesn't even know he exists that's that was the that was the the, the what threw me off is like oh he doesn't even know that Miguel is is his son so that's going to be interesting and how that all plays out I don't. I don't know, but I, as I said it though, I think Leguizamo would actually be pretty good. John Leguizamo, who was just, um, I mean, he was, he was, he's been in tons of stuff too. But he, my one of my favorite roles of his is, is Chef. But he was, he would just play the voice of Bruno in uh, in Canto. But he's, uh, but he's, uh, he's, he's John Leguizamo is always great. Yeah. Did you happen to find the pictures? Or no? no, I couldn't find it. I if so, I if if I find it, I really don't like remember like what account posted. Yeah. It was like a random thing, but I'll I'll send it to you. Um, Paul Gale Network, thank you so much. Congrats on 200k. Thanks for the creator's opportunity. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, let's see. Let's see. Any other questions? Oh, this is. I actually made a video on this. Do you think we'll see chosen in silver fight? I made like a huge like breakdown. Okay. What do you think? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think we'll definitely see them fight. I think that's what that's what the the, the guys have done very well, giving us things that we've always wanted to see. Like we didn't want to see Johnny and Daniel fight again, right? And the the way that they did it was so smart. I mean, we got to see him fight in the in the 
apartment that one time but to see them actually do a tournament fight together was great but chosen and and silver yeah i think we're going to definitely see that fight otherwise why why pair them together if they're going to do we've we've seen so well i'd love to see silver and 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 daniel kind of get into it again daniel and, and mike barnes are definitely going to get into it again um yeah I, always, I just that was my one of my biggest gripes always with karate kid three like always is that daniel's just inconsistent because he he comes back like after you come back from okinawa and you're fighting to the death is a tournament gonna bother you are you gonna worry are you gonna worry about fighting mike barnes when when you just fought somebody to the death it's like it, it, i mean and 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 did and won viciously <laughs> yeah. won viciously like they should have announced maybe i don't know that it was at a different I, I don't even know how they could have redone that, but like that was that always made no sense to me. Like he was scared of Mike Barnes. Like, why are you scared of Mike Barnes? You just fought to the death and you had chosen was scarier than Mike Barnes. Yeah, but he's karate's bad boy. True. <laughs> true. That's true. And you know, he told him his karate's a joke. Like that that, that yeah, must... he said his said his your your uh your your teacher's a, a joke and <laughs> all that. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's so awesome because Sean Kanan sounds the same looks the same like i'm 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 ready for him did you interview him yet no no okay okay i I would love to though i know he's been doing like he that that was the thing is when i uh i had said to i said to the guys when i last time i talked to him i was like he's coming back and then obviously they're not saying (laughs) anything i was like i see he's out there giving like like there's a lot of people when when you give when they're doing interviews and they're like, I don't know if I'm going to come back. Like Elizabeth shoe played coy. <laughs> this guy's like, yeah, I'll come back. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, have him back. It's like, he'll be back. He's he probably wrapped all of his scenes already anyway. Yeah. Yeah. He he's been yeah. like promoting the show since day one. He's always posting. He's still doing martial arts. He's back. He's going to be back for sure. I think what they'll do is um, I think we're going to get a chosen for silver fight in season five, possibly, Mike versus Daniel, and then I think the big mm. one they're going to save is Terry versus Daniel. I think they're going to save that one for season six. Maybe even Terry versus Johnny, though, too, because Terry, you know, I think you're right, Terry versus Daniel for sure, but Terry versus Johnny because Johnny got his got his ass kicked by him, hasn't really had a chance to to come back, you know. So that would be something that, um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play, and I wonder if I wonder if Stingray will ultimately be part of helping them take down Silver. I don't think Silver goes down. I mean, does he go down in season five or does he go down in season six? That's the question. It's it's crazy that you mentioned that because like we we know the show is going to go at least six seasons. That's what yeah. they've said, and I feel yeah. like it might go up to like a season seven, and. I did not expect them to do like I I did expect them to do what they did with uh Silver turning against Crease. I did think that would happen. I just didn't think it would happen in 4. I thought they would kind of like prolong it and have 4 season 4 Silver and Crease are best buds. Right. And then season 5 is when you start to get that little animosity. Then at the end of 5 he turns his back on him. So the fact that they're making these moves at 4 and we're kind of at maybe the midway part of the show. If it goes up to seven, it's just crazy. Like how much more story they have left. And we don't even know where they're going to go with it. No. And that's the thing is that they're not, they're clearly, they clearly have somewhere they want to go with it. Like they have ideas of what they want to do. They're not just making seasons to make seasons. They know where they want to go. They're having fun doing it. And they just seem like, you know, and uh, obviously anytime it's, it's always hard when you start making shows and you, and they're successful that when people go, well, why is it going on longer? And the answer is because it's, it's starting to fade a bit. And the answer is because of money. Right. And a lot of times that's, it's people do it for the money. And because the passion's not there, that's not the case for this show. The the passion is, is clearly there. The, the love for the characters are still there. And I think they're going to get out at the moment when they start to feel like, okay, we've told all the story that we need to tell. And I think, I think six seasons is probably the guess, but if it goes to seven, I wouldn't be surprised. But I'd say six or seven is probably uh, anything past that. You're going to be pushing the pushing the territory, but you know, but the guys have earned the the the, the respect of of hey, just give us what you give us. My thing is, they've always said from the beginning, they've always said at least six. So from them saying at least, and they always say like we have like so many ideas, like we might have to like bump it up. I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like that means seven. I feel like they'll kind of be able to make it a seven, but yeah, I think six or seven would be fine. We'll see. So let's, 
Uh, do you want to take a couple more questions sure. before we wrap up? Sure. Okay. Um, I hope we get 10 seasons. I just had to pull that up. Yeah, I yeah. hope so too. We'll get spinoffs after. Like, I I actually have a question um, for you. Do you think, sure. um, you know, you look at a franchise, franchise like Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars is never ending. Like it, it, it doesn't matter if the Skywalker saga ends. It, it that doesn't matter. You're go- always gonna have video games, books, mm-hmm. comics, and look at the TV shows and the movies. Do you think co- the Cobra Kai universe, when Cobra Kai ends the series, do you think they can still like, you know, keep going with like? Do you think they like really like expanded this world? So after like one we know we might get a spinoff but do you think it'll go beyond that movies books all that star wars route it's tougher it's tougher it's tougher to do um because a lot of different reasons right you have star wars is is such a different beast where it's 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 not comparable of what the way star wars in general changed just the entertainment business overall and changed what science fiction fantasy was and open up this bigger philosophy on galaxies and aliens and worlds. And it's, it's just, it's just tougher. Um, it is definitely something that could be spun off into, into other shows. The question is, will people care past Daniel and Johnny? Maybe, maybe so. Um, the way that they were able to move it with, they set up so much lore in star Wars, even with that scene with Obi-Wan and, and Luke in episode four, where he's, they're talking about the clone wars and Anakin Skywalker and all this. So then when you get to the prequels, you're like, Oh, this is what Obi-Wan was talking about inside of that. Um, so it, it, you know, that's why I mentioned inside of the spinoffs, I think that to me, a very interesting series would be young Miyagi. And I think that if you did that the right way, you could potentially get people on board for sure. Um, because what Cobra Kai does very well, that is not easy to do. Um, they, they look at this stream right now. You've got someone who was born not even 20 years ago and somebody who was born way over 20 years ago. Um, and we both love the show. Yeah. Because of um, for a lot of different reasons. Right. You you can relate to a lot of the people inside of your age bracket. And I can relate to a lot of the people inside of my age bracket. Um, we both like the stories that they're told. And that's that's the thing. If it spans off into a different show, whether it's Miguel or Sam or Tori or any of it too, and if it's just about them, will they have me on board for the entire time? Maybe because I'm a Cobra Kai fan, but can they get new audience in? I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky, it's a, it's a tricky, tricky thing, but it's just a matter on how it's all set up, but books and stuff, not, not to the extent of Star Wars. No. Well, Robert Mark came and said he um, he said he um, might have something working. He might be working on something which, on a book. No, I'm working on a, on, a, on another on movie. That's on, great on a on a Karate Kid because because he originally he wanted Karate Kid three to be about the first Miyagi. He never wanted to do the. Did you know this? I don't think so. No. So he never wanted to do Terry Silver, Mike Barnes. Yeah. He never wanted to do that story. He wanted to do um, a story about the very first Miyagi, or mm-hmm. who brought it, who brought it over from China. Yeah, yeah, like that yeah. that whole story that was brought up in Karate Kid Part Two. He wanted to do that film, um, and like the origins of Miyagi Do. But uh, it was the company that was like, no, like 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 do Karate Kid Part right. Three, bring back Ralph and yeah, uh, Pat and martin so yeah. like he was like okay so he put that movie together and like he didn't want to so that might be like a reason why a lot of fans you know weren't for it because he wasn't for it right he, he didn't even want to do it so but well, i Avel- think- yeah even avilson when he directed he's like that's not a good movie <laughs> <laughs> how do you make a movie and like no it's like I liked yeah. it though, like you know, like I like for it. what it is the cheese, the cheese side. Of I it. like you, that, especially yeah. when you watch it now. I mean, it's it's, but it's not it's not a good movie when you, when you when you watch it. It's 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 pretty bad, but it's still it's still now that it's part of the Cobra Kai universe. It's 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 they've made it more enjoyable. Yeah, like I I like because Terry Silver is a character now, and like you know we knew he would come in the series. Watching those scenes of him being crazy was exciting because it's like oh want to see him in cobra kai that was all that was going through my head at least yeah so um okay this is a good question we'll take two more questions is that cool uh yeah two more is good okay so we talked about julie pierce returning so 
where and how does Julie meet up with Daniel? Julie and Dan- I mean, I don't know. That's too tough. I think we'd have to see the events of five because I don't think she shows up in five unless it's like the last scene in five. Um, so it's got to be something. That's why I don't think you can't get rid of silver after one season on top right you like yeah let him be part of it one more time and then and then if you put you put crease on the back burner for a season so when he finally comes back in like six people losing their minds um and maybe that that's she's got it she's got to help somehow like when they've got to they've got to maybe open up more stuff who knows maybe she's maybe she's the answer to terry silver's money maybe she's loaded now maybe she's got a lot of cash and she's able to help them out yeah I, I I think what's what's cool is um however she comes back it's gonna she's tied with Miyagi though yeah. um just like chosen but Julie had experiences with Mr Miyagi so that's pretty cool because you'll get like another aspect of that like like maybe like we learn like stuff from Daniel like things that M- Miyagi told him that we never knew in Karate Kid so maybe um we'll like we'll hear Julie say oh something. Mr. Miyagi taught me this. It was not something from the movie, just more lore. Right. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I want to. I want to see how like she. She's definitely. She's gonna. She'll. She'll be in it. She. She. Have you heard her talk about Cobra Kai? I haven't. So they've asked her. They asked her about. People, fans were tweeting out about her, and she. They were asking her about Cobra Kai, and she had a. She had a dog named Kai, so she thought people were asking her about her dog. And then she realized what it was, and she's because there was no interview I read with her, and 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 they she's like, oh, Cobra Kai. She's like, yeah, people were asking me, and she didn't like shoot it down. She didn't shoot it down, but she didn't she didn't say she was coming back for sure. Is that a coincidence that her dog was named Kai? Uh, or yeah, yeah, it was a coincidence. Her name, her she, she wasn't it wasn't off of Karate Kid. K A I. Yeah, I think so. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, let's take one more question. Um. Do you see any in the chat? that stand out to you um there is right there do you think they could bring any non miyagi characters in the spinoffs like what's up with dre and han now oh Um, like oh from the reboot oh right um yeah no probably not (laughs) probably not because because they said they they the reason they said it's not connected to this universe they said it's not part of the miyagi verse so i don't think you're gonna see them no yeah i think i think they're done with that yeah story like it 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 doesn't make sense to like do like a sequel to that when you already have it's done and the writers the writers said and i mean who could blame them they they weren't sure if cobra kai would get made especially after that movie came out because it's like they kind of moved on from it yep but we got we got it and yeah well the story of how they all put it they put it together was incredible the, the way that they had to go and they met with zapka they had to meet with you know will smith's company they had to feel like the, the the idea of how they had to do it and the, the whole story of how they put it together and made the pitch is is pretty is pretty fascinating someone needs to make a documentary on the beginning because also like the transition to you from youtube to netflix like yeah there needs to be a documentary on on Absolutely. the show's journey for sure that would be cool so that concludes our live stream i just want to thank all of you for joining us and especially thank you to christian for joining this was a lot of fun thank you yeah man of course thank you it's a, it's a pleasure to watch your your channel and everything that you're doing congratulations on 200k it's amazing thank you've you. earned it um i'm looking forward to watching you do more stuff and getting i get my news my karate kid news from you so uh so continue to do what you're doing man fight the good fight I have to ask any, I, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. A- any chance of, uh, a co- if there's any Cobra Kai movie, uh, movie, Schmodown? Schmodown. So I want to be okay. a part of that. Well, listen, so I'm going to need your help then. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Wait, wait, I was so, just, no, okay. no, listen. So I, I have been talking to Netflix about doing a karate, uh, Cobra Kai Schmodown. No, and really? Yes. The guy's hooked me up with the conversation to have it and we were we we started the conversation a little late but let netflix know that you want that we want to be because i want to get the hardcore fans and what i want to do i want zapka as a judge i want to dress the whole i want to dress the whole thing like a like the all valley i want to do straight up cobra kai trivia where the best best and we have a tournament between cobra kai trivia players and we have like 
came in there the guys there like everybody there like we get we get a lot of bill conti's music license we play best of the best as people are uh you play uh you're the best around when, when people are playing like all of it i want to do the whole tournament but i just you just got to get netflix i'm going to start the conversations up with netflix again for six that's my or five that's that's my uh that's my goal that is insane yeah i would i would love that whether i was in it or just watching it that'd be sick 100 percent. that would be so sick so I'm, I'm glad i brought that up that yeah me too good. me too i hope you do it i hope you do it fingers crossed fingers crossed so like if you when any anytime you want anytime you want to make you want to you want to sing sing it out there on, on one of the to get make make the karate make the cobra kai schmodown happen uh let's let's work together but i'm i'm they they were very they were very open to it it was a great it, we had a lot of great conversations it just you know the way that the world was just kind of put a little damper on it but we're gonna we'll, we'll start it up we'll start the conversations again for sure that's so cool and like it would probably be like like right before like season five comes out there's gonna be, be so much goal. hype that would be a yeah. good time yeah so excited for that so before we wrap up do you want to shout out like once again where everyone can find you social media youtube yeah sure if you i mean if you guys are into trivia and you want to check out the world championship of movie trivia it is the movie trivia schmodown and it that's just the, the name you just go to youtube.com slash the schmodown our season starts up uh in the end of february early march and then my channel christian harloff just my name right there you just put that out there we just started the channel up around three or four months ago it's cooking right now we're doing we're doing pretty good things over there it's pop culture it's everything so if you are watching the stream right now or if you're going to be watching in the replay just type in the name head on over there and uh and give us a subscribe and see if uh see what you like and i'll make it a little easier for you guys i linked both of the links down oh, below thank you thank got you. you i got you so if you guys don't like typing you can just <laughs> you can just click it's all about clicking nowadays it's, it's your generation and you don't know who antonio banderas is and you don't type <laughs> what's a facebook <laughs> what's a facebook it's true oh man back in my day there was a friendster <laughs> uh, what is that from friendster it said it, forget it <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I wouldn't be on movie trivia schmo yeah, now. Just no, Cobra no. Kai. You, you and your dad's balls when that thing came out. <laughs> <laughs> Just Cobra Kai Star Wars for yeah, me. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. Well, you're the best, kid. Thank you so much for uh for for having me on. Uh, I'm I, it was exciting to to get it the chance to to shoot the shit with you on and we'll do we'll do it again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. Thank you to everyone for joining. I'll see you next time on Cobra Kai Kid. And until then, remember, Cobra Kai never dies, mother F. <laughs> yeah.